What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 14 of our finance with Python tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is including machine learning into this kind of basic long short strategy. Uh, we're, on, we're pretty much just going to impose machine learning as, a, as another uh, requisite to getting in or out of a company and that's basically it. So first of all, let's go ahead and we need to import a few things. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll just come down here and we're going to bring in, uh, first of all, we don't need date time and PyT. I think those are just there from when I created like a new strategy. So let's do all the uh, sklearn imports. So first we're going to have from uh, sklearn dot and we can use, first let's use the linear underscore model. And this will be, uh, we're going to import logistic regression. Logistic regression. So this is a type of classifier with scikit-learn. Um, so for example, for all of these, let me just search real quick, logistic regression. For all of these, you can do, uh, you can look up exactly what they're doing with scikit-learn, first of all. So let me pull up that uh, here. So this is an example of all of the uh, parameters here. So this is SK learn linear model, logistic regression. These are all the parameters. So it's useful <laughs> to know a little bit about logistic regression uh, when you're going to go ahead and, and use it. But for now, we'll use the defaults. Turns out the defaults are usually pretty good. For our cases, it's probably not going to be the greatest. We won't, I don't think we'll kill ourselves with it, but, um, but you would, you'd probably, if you're interested in machine learning, it would behoove you to read through these and then also learn a little bit more about logistic regression. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll bring in logistic regression. Um, we're also going to bring in from sklearn, uh, dot SVM, which is support vector machines. Uh, we can import, uh, SVC, uh, linear SVC and then we'll do new SVC and then uh, let's go ahead we can bring in uh, I'm not sure we'll actually use all of these we might we'll see anyway we'll do from SK learn dot ensemble ensemble import uh, and this one is the random forest forest classifier some someone will, specifically requested uh, that one. So we'll, we'll use that as well. We, it, it fits in with pricing data, I suppose. Um, and then what we'll do is, uh, let's bring in also from SK Learn, we're gonna import pre-processing, although we may or not may not need to use that. And then finally, we're gonna go from collections, import DQ and counter. DQ is a container. What it's going to let us do is it we can say, hey, this is a container. We want it to be like 500 long, and we could contain things within it. Although, actually, we probably don't even need DQ for this one because we'll use history instead, and we'll go through history. So I think I'll just get rid of DQ, uh, and this will be fine. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we'll, we keep basically um, all of these ETFs that we're going to be into, and then let's add a couple more. So first we'll say context dot uh histor historical underscore bars and this will be like how many historical bars should we consider uh at a time and that'll make sense when we get into handle data it'll make a little more sense and then we're gonna have context dot feature underscore window and that will be equal to 10. so way machine learning works especially with scikit learn but really across the board machine learning for the most part at least supervised machine learning um, you're going to have features and labels. You've got features and then the labels that apply and you train based on those features and labels. And then you have your current set of features. You feed it through and you ask it to predict what it thinks the label is based on the training that it just did. So, um, so what we'll do is we'll go through the last hundred bars of data, basically. So the last hundred days of data and we'll take slices of 10 day windows of data and for each slice, uh, what we're going to do is we'll train that slice and then we'll say, okay, what happened? Where did the price go from this point? If the price went up, that's great. That's a buy. If price fell, that's a sell as our label. So uh, that's what we'll do there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in down to handle data now. And we'll go ahead and get rid of this. We can keep all of this stuff and we'll keep tracking uh, these 
uh, records. So if you don't have those, you might want to add them. It's useful, especially the leverage. Just always put leverage in there. I've learned that. Uh, you got to have that. So uh, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to say prices. And we haven't covered history yet, so congratulations. Here we go with history. What history allows us to do is query... Uh, Quantopian for historical data. Now you can do close price, you can do uh, minute price, day price, and I think there's other ones. I can't remember what the other ones are, but minute and day. Obviously, if we're working with daily bars, you can't query minute data. So if you want minute data, you have to be using minute bars, but otherwise you should be fine. But we're not really interested in minute trading at the moment anyways. We might eventually convert this to minute trading, but if you're trading in the minute, you're going to run up a lot of trade fees probably. <laughs> so we'll, we're going to avoid that for now. We'll just do it because you'll see this strategy as we've actually already seen the back test does a lot of trading. So we don't really want to compound that. So anyway, history. And then we want a history for what? Well, we want historical bars basically. So we're going to say bar underscore count is going to be equal to context.historical underscore bars. So that's going to be the amount of bars of history that we want is going to be 100 bars. The frequency is another parameter, but for us, uh, we're interested in one day. So um, I'm pretty sure this is the default. You may or may not even need to pass that. And then field, we're interested in price. So you could you could query for volume, open, high, low, close. So like say you're doing like a strategy that measures high minus low for volatility, let's say. You could query like that kind of stuff. So what this is going to do is for is every day it's going to run this right here and it's going to what this is going to do history returns the current price and then the previous x amount of bars minus one basically so when we're doing a hundred we're doing the uh, bar count of a hundred here so what it's saying is today's price and then 99 prices ago it's going to store that into a data frame of prices so uh from here that's basically all we need in this before we get into this for loop because we basically want to do this um, for uh, each each company and so and actually so what we'll pro well this should be fine because what it's going to do is it'll be prices and it should return a pandas data frame that has columns for each of these ETFs so uh, you could also put it in here. I think, but I'm pretty sure it would still return a massive data frame, so that'd be a really waste of processing in this case. So for stock in the context.stock, so that's these. So for each of those, what do we want to do? Well, we'll assign the moving averages. That's no problem. And then we're going to say the start bar, um, because what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through this list as we create our features. So we're going to say the start bar is equal to context.feature underscore window. So that's this. So we have to start at the 10th point to get the previous 9, 10 points, right? So that's how we're going to start there. And then we're going to say we're going to convert prices. We want to convert those last 100 days of prices to a list. So we're going to say uh, price underscore list equals prices for that stock. So again, this returns a pandas data frame where the columns are equal to these little equities here. So each column is that. And then, so stock will reference that specific stock's column. And then we do dot to list. And this is how you can convert a pandas data frames column to a list of values. And that's all it is. It's just a list of closing prices, basically. So once we've done that, we're ready to start building our features and our labels. So capital X for now will equal an empty set and capital, or I mean lowercase y will equal, sorry, not an empty set, empty list. And then what we're ready to do is to iterate through the prices to populate each of these. So at every day, we're going to take the last 10 days of prices and then say, what is today's price? Is it higher or lower than the previous price? If that's the case, we're good to go, that's a buy, let's say. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do uh, here. So we'll pick this up in the next tutorial. If you have any questions or comments up to this point as far as how we're doing any of this stuff or how we're getting prices with history, anything like that, uh, let me know below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until the next video.